what's going on what's going on what's going on everybody it's your boy abk and thank you for checking out another one of my weekly forex and crypto analysis i really do appreciate it so let's go ahead and get things started guys so last week you know we did i didn't look for that many trade opportunities you know maybe i took some personal ones but nothing that i would want to send out to anybody in general whether if it's in for free or for next wave or for anywhere you know so i it, it, it was basically because it was nfp week it was the first week of the month etc cetera, etc cetera. i didn't really see much in the market and i wanted to see some type of reactions in the market before i start to base make some solid um analysis you know so let's go ahead and do some fundamental analysis you guys know how i do um i'm not by any means any type of fundamental analysis i just look at the i just want to know what the high impact news <clears throat> sorry my, my my throat's been feeling weird right now but i usually just look for high impact news and i want to know what time it is and i want to also know what kind of news it is right there is news there are news events that usually have make have a more impact than other news such as FOM, fomc and nfp they usually have a higher impact in the market more than um core retail sales in some cases right but there's sometimes maybe core retail sales may take over as well but that that's just you just want to be paying attention to the red folders right so before i continue please go ahead and drop a like and drop a comment um we do a pre or drop a comment and i'm not you don't have to drop a comment you know what i'm saying but we do appreciate it if you if you drop a like for us so that we can be able to grow keep growing in the algorithm etc cetera, etc cetera. we appreciate that so let's go ahead and check this out tuesday january 11th 9 a.m we have federal Fed, federal chair power will be testifying um Wednesday, 7.30 a.m., USD CPI and core CPI. Thursday, 7.30, we have PPI, and this is all U.S. dollar. 7.30 a.m. as well, core retail sales. So there's a lot of U.S. dollar news next week between Tuesday and Friday. So we're going to be expecting a lot of those type of news events, so you want to be careful when you are in those markets. So... With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the DXY first and foremost, right? So first, let's go ahead and take a look at this weekly time frame. And let me go ahead and hide all my drawings. Weekly time frame. This candle is telling me sell. Like this is a shooting star on the weekly time frame. This US dollar is more than likely going to be making a push to the downside. You know, I'd be surprised if it doesn't but based off of this weekly time frame it does look like it is going to be falling right I'm going over to the daily time frame um we can see that price has we see that price has pushed to the upside and what i was really saying last week i was like hey with the opportunity possibility of price pushing up from down here where this 50 I'm 50 email on the daily time frame is basically lining up with is not necessarily a great idea to try and get into a sell opportunity there right I would say hey wait for a retracement possibly back up to these highs right back up to these Fib Fibonacci levels over here I was saying hey you know what with these fibs right here what I would rather suggest you do is if you're going to look for a sell opportunity wait for a price to come up here and wait for those rejections before pushing to the downside and that's exactly what price did right unfortunately it didn't get up to where i wanted it to get to the 71 percent as per usual that's where i look for for my entries and price that ever got up there it definitely just came to the 61.8 dropped retraced continued to the downside and so i expect this I expect your USD to continue pushing to the downside next week. Um, that's, I don't necessarily want, I don't necessarily want to see this current play on the lower time frames play out where it could pot, it could put, I mean, it's already broken through my zone that I was looking for price to retrace back down into, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, it should be like right there. 
see so from those lows to these highs yeah price should be right in there at my zone right it's still inside it's still no it's not necessarily inside with this type of price action going on i need to see on the lower time frame some type of price action in order for it to tell me that hey price could potentially go bullish here but based on how price came down i'm not necessarily a big fan of looking for this to for this to buy you know again we had already seen that weekly candle weekly candle is basically telling us this thing is gonna push to the downside so definitely waiting for this to break out but overall it is still in this not this demand zone i don't know let me delete that price is still inside this box right price is in, still inside this zone and i'm definitely still the possibility of price of price buying off of here does exist it exists but i'm not looking for the buys i want price to break out like as you guys can see i still want to see at least the likes of like 93 get hit before a push to the upside in like on a long-term basis so we'll see what happens still waiting for this bear flag or this bullish flag to see if it's going to play out or not i don't think it is i think it's going to push to the downside price has just been consolidating and we're going to be waiting for a breakout eventually let's go ahead and take a look at this on arbitrage All right, so on arbitrage, weekly time frame, same thing. It's just been consolidating for the past, well, since November 22nd, right? It's been consolidating basically, but we're waiting for that breakout. Daily time frame. I had mentioned, oops. Ooh, I like seeing that. I had mentioned, hey, last week, I want to see the breakout of this, the retracement. Price has been holding here on the daily time frame. So that's, you know, that's just, it is what it is. I wanted the 71% more. And we could buy, I still got the sell opportunity on the, on, on the US, on the DXY. So this, I do believe it should continue going bearish, especially I'm seeing magenta candles. That's telling me that there's bearish pressure in the market. The level pro and the arbitrage Z haven't quite lined up yet, but I am still definitely looking for this to continue to the downside. And I like the I like the odds. Four hour time frame. It called bearish, but again, as I said last week, when I or as I say every week, basically, right? If I see price moving up and down like that, it ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to, you know, I don't like necessarily playing off of consolidating markets on the bands like this because they call a buy and it could, it'll go only up so high, you know. One hour time frame, it had called for a sell. And again, it's consolidating, not really my, my play. Although this, this sell right here played out pretty nicely. But other than that, I'm waiting for that to break out. That things change for me i still feel the same way it's it's just unfortunate that the area that i was looking for the sell opportunities for the dxy it never reached for me so is what it is euro usd i had called this buy and i moved my stop loss a little too early at break even and price ended up taking off to the upside so hey it is what it is it is what it is, but let me go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. All right, so I had said last week, well, first of all, let's go into the weekly time frame. And same thing as with the DXY. I love that weekly candle. That is a hammer if I've seen one. That is a beautiful hammer if I've seen one, right? So with this hammer that this printed out, I'm expecting the DXY to go bullish. Like if this does not 
if this does not go bullish like that, I'll not even hold on. If this does not go bullish and do this type of play overall, I'd be surprised to be quite honest. Well, not even that. I'll, I would probably even expect this to just keep, keep on going bullish and when it stops, it stops, you know? But like I said, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that this is going to go, bull, this is going to keep going bullish. Um, price is currently coming up towards the 50 EMA time on the daily time frame. So I'm definitely going to be watching for this breakout right here. As we can see here, price has been ranging between these two zones. I'm just waiting for price to break out of one point that 1.13860 area, which is right above that 50 EMA. Once we get that breakout, then a, a retracement would be would be solid for a continuation. So, and I was saying that, hey, I see price rejecting off of this trend line. It looks like it's making slightly higher highs and higher lows. From these lows to these highs, price retraced back into that 71% Fib, which rejected off of that trend line. I like the confluence there arbitrage on the lower time frame is we're starting to look for buy opportunity so i was like hey let's try it and you know stop loss hit break even very soon news happened that pushed price up and then pushed it back down and then ultimately pushed up to the upside so but it's okay you know like it's this is still an arranging market and we were playing it in the middle i wasn't really necessarily down to risk getting back in here only to have price come back down to these lows you know so i was okay with striking like with getting a getting a hit getting to second base and then basically price just coming back down but the breakout i'm i'm here for it i'm here for it right daily time well let's go into the weekly first on arbitrage arbitrage same thing right we have that price has, is just consolidating inside of this little zone over here. It's currently above the second deviation. So that's what I like to see for a potential starting, a potential turning point. And hey, like I mentioned last week, I'm liking the buyer opportunities on EU. Um, it's very, it looks very bullish and this is gonna keep going. I expect this to continue going bullish. I should have really just stayed in my EU opportunity but it's okay that's it's just a learning lesson right it's a learning lesson for everybody because by mistakes you can learn from them and <laughs> not make the same mistakes <laughs> all right so eu for our time frame consolidating market not my thing when it comes to the bands but i expect this to keep going bullish one hour time frame basically same thing but i do expect this to keep going bullish this buy played out, although I would not have bought off of this candle. It would have been weird for me. <laughs> eh, the next one, eh, maybe I would have. Who knows? Nah, I probably wouldn't have. No, let me not lie. So, EU, that's what I'm seeing. I want to see that breakout in the retest. AUD USD. Let's see what's going on with AU. All right, so AU, I was honestly not expecting, give me a second, put that over there. I was not expecting AU to really reject off of this zone like that. I was thinking that, hey, AU is probably gonna break through it and come up to the supply zone where we also have this downtrend that is, that lines up with that, supp with that supply zone. And the supply zone is from this high of 0 0.75586 to these lows of 0 0.69956, basically 0 0.700. Price coming back up into the supply zone to see if it's gonna continue making lower lows. However, price really just came into the zone from, from what I'm suspecting at least the the lower high of 0 0.73692 on the daily time frame 
to the lower low of 0 0.699500 basically price came up into that fib zone and then gave a good rejection there that's what i'm suspecting happened right so this is not necessarily a bad play it's just not a play that i would have wanted to get into because i would have just thought that oh price is going to end up coming into the zone and then i would have got stopped out i would rather been patient and it's okay because i'm still iffy on if this is gonna if this is gonna buy or not because from this previous bullish move run we can see that price came up to the 71 percent fibonacci levels and rejected off of there nicely so if i can get a retracement on the lower time frames if i can get a decent oh and it was a falling wedge i like seeing that yeah i mean you can even oops let me lock this hold on you can even Put this over here if you would like. It still looks pretty nice. Although it it'd probably be better looking like that. But regardless, it actually looks more like a channel that broke out than a falling wedge. But still, if I can see the lower time frames do something like this for me, where it retraces back down to the likes of 0 0.71510, I might look for that buy opportunity. I might really look for that buy opportunity there on the lower time frames, if I can get that. What am I doing? I need that back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and have this chilling like a villain. And once once I see what price is looking like, like I said, I would like to see if it's going to retrace. Let me get a retracement before it takes off. I will look for a buy opportunity there for sure, for sure, because this can still go bullish. Like, I don't necessarily believe that ADUSD is going to go bearish at this time, right? Um, it could very well, it could very well come down to the lows of, or not that, it could definitely play off it was locked it could definitely play off of this fibonacci's these fibonacci's down here and come down to 0 0.70765 which i think i would rather want to look for that but if this opportunity presents itself then maybe i'm gonna i'm, I'm probably gonna take it right but I would definitely want to rather play this. So we're going to see what ADUSD is going to do. I'm going to set an alert for down over here. And I'll just set an alert for this one as well. So I'll be able to be like, hey, this is the opportunity is coming up. Or not, not 0 0.71392. I do not want an alert for that. What I would want an alert for would be 0 0.71469. So 0 0.71470 basically. That's where I would be looking for for price to retrace down to. And if it gives me a bullish move, then hey, I'm going to take it because it's, look at the volume even. Big volume, news, news pulled up and then price pushed to the upside, retracement continuation. And like I usually say with the news, they usually just push it. It usually just takes price to where it was going to go in the first place, just a little bit faster. Let's go back to AUD USD real quick. I need to do arbitrage. So RB talking about, hey, weekly time frame, rejecting off of the lower danger zone, but I do like the way how price is retracing. Weekly time frame is still pretty bearish though. So any bulls is kind of early. Consider 
that's what the the weekly time frame is talking about but the daily time frame is definitely looking like yo I don't know. Daily time frame over here, like I, it's it's looking pretty good. It hit that seventy one percent, left the wick there. I like that green candle. I'm okay with buying this RB style, AUD USD. I'm actually really okay with getting into a buy with arbitrage to one to five. How about we do the, these these lows down here? I'm I'm really I'm really down for this. Like, it's unfortunate for me that I wasn't paying attention to the markets at all on Friday, and I'm just seeing this right now. So, yeah, this was a this was something that I was really looking for on arbitrage. I was like, hey, I wanted to break out the retest, got the retest. Now I want the continuation to the upside. I'm actually gonna have to take profits. Yeah, take profits is good right there. But again, like I mentioned, if we can get even better pricing down over here at 0 0.71474, that's it's lit. Because that would make the trade a one to three point one four. So I'm gonna actually see if I could get this. I'm gonna probably I'm gonna more than likely place like 0.3% of my trade up here and then put the rest of my position over here. So if I'm risking like if I'm let's just say hypothetically speaking, I'm risking a thousand dollars, right? I'm gonna put three hundred dollars over here and then I'm gonna put seven hundred dollars down at, at a limit over here. And if price continues to go bullish then hey I was able to get at least some type of money up from the market over here at 0 0.71809. But I am more than look, I'm more than happy to be looking for, let me go ahead and set this up over here. I will be more than happy to look for this bull retracement continuation to the upside play on on AUDUSD, right? I'm bearish on the DXY and it can definitely, the DXY, like I said, could definitely just take off from where it's at. And AUDUSD looks like a better buying opportunity rather than trying to get into EURUSD because EURUSD is just gonna be a breakout. It's already basically done what I, what I wanted it to do. And unfortunately, I just got wicked out too early or I got wicked out because I got I placed my stop loss at break even too early. So and it, it's okay because I would have got stopped that regardless. So AED USD definitely setting a buy limit over here at 0 0.71468. But I'm also gonna get into I'm also gonna be getting into 0.3% of my trade over here. So that's it. Point three percent of position. And then I'm gonna have over here point seven percent of my position for the buy limit for this play to the left. If we can get that zero point seven one four seventy. That's a one to three point one three risk to reward, and this is a one to one point eight eight, which is very close to a one to two. So I like the odds on this a lot. I like the AED USD play. I'm gonna get in that when the market opens. All right, so you chef, take a look at you chef. All right, so Yushef came right back into this trend line. So that's exactly what I was talking about with Yushef. 
last week. I'm like, this is a little iffy to me because I, knowing you, Chef, just knowing you, Chef, it's probably going to come right back into this trend line. So I'm not going to try to sell down here, especially after it's coming down into this previous zone where I was mentioning, hey, there is still the opportunity of price going bullish here because from the higher low of on the lower time frames on the higher low of 0 0.90210 to the higher high of 0 0.93713 and again i'm still referring to like the four hour daily time frame let me just go to daily then you can see it better lower high lower low i mean higher low higher high from from this high price it still came back down into this zone over overall this is still the demand zone where price was going bullish multiple times so i was saying hey i don't like necessarily where price came and stopped at the potential for it to turn around over here it's very much is very much viable right and it did so and i'm glad i'm like hey i'm glad i didn't play it off that hard So going on to the four hour time frame, let me delete this. So price basically, then actually me, let me see if I can fix this up. No, price is still right at that 50 EMA on the daily time frame. So we can still see a bearish push to the downside. I want to see the DXY burn. So <laughs> let it burn, in my opinion. Daily time frame from this high where this wick was at which was the previous lower high to the, well, let me just go on to the four hour time frame so that it can look like a actual lower high and lower low play. Price didn't come up to the 71% Fibonacci level, which again, that irritated me. Not Well, not irritated, but I'm just like, come on, like, can't catch a break here. <laughs> and the goal did that to me. So many players did that to me where it just came up to the 61.8, left me, left me, left me there to hang and dry and i'm just like okay you know just forget about my feelings <laughs> but yeah um i definitely i definitely do expect price to continue going bearish you know from that this bearish move that that played out weekly time frame it doesn't necessarily i like the wick that it left and it also is holding right underneath that 50 EMA with the DXY, how it looks as well. The way how I want AUD USD to go bullish, I expect Euro USD to go bullish. I expect you chef to continue going bearish. And again, it's just unfortunate that I, was, I wasn't able to get into that. One hour time frame, however, if I can get a possibility, because this looks like a rising, rising. <laughs> this looks like a possible rising, no, not there. Eh, it's not a rising wedge necessarily because it's only two touches. But price broke out of it. I do like that as a rising as a rising wedge actually. Price broke out. Out if I can get a retracement back up to the likes of 0 0.92150, give me a head and shoulders type of play because that's what it ultimately looks like right here. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. If price can come up over here, then I might take that sell opportunity right here. Boys, boys, y'all know what I'm talking about. So we'll see what, we'll see what goes on. I don't think that, oh, my charger's not right there. I don't think that necessarily price is going to come back up to 0 0.92389. So that would be my, where my stop loss would be at. But if it did, I'd be surprised. And I'll be like, hey, well, that's where my swings are. That's where my swing level is at, where I would be down the risk like 2% or 3% of a trade for a, for a swing. But I like the the white the rising wedge play and weekly time frame like i mentioned price is still holding underneath of it big volume on big candles dropping the volume was decreasing but the volume was still pretty high as the candles were dropping like look at this candle 
big volume, then a drop right after. Yeah, I want to see price retrace and then continue going to the downside, just like with you, Chef. I mean, just like with um, AUSD six. Add an alert, create. So we're gonna see what goes down with you, Chef. I'm still gonna have this alert up here as well, but I definitely do like 0 0.92184 for the selling opportunity. It looks pretty crisp to me. Ooh, so we're gonna see what happens. I like this play though. It's going over to arbitrage, daily time frame, called for the sell, retracement of that RSI line. If I'm gonna sell anywhere, it's gonna be here off of the daily time. No, it's actually no, never mind. Price goes over here. I am tripping. But price did reject off of that RSI line pretty nicely. Four hour time frame called for a buy so i was really skeptical the buy played out really nicely i don't know why i didn't play this this played out really nicely i really don't know why i didn't play that i wasn't paying attention to you chef that's why but you chef one hour time frame we got this the sell call definitely want that retracement so things are looking like they're lining up for me for, for sure for sure arbitrage i want the same thing basically as i want with with you um with trade with just um technical analysis i want price to retrace back up to the upside to give me selling opportunities so i'm gonna go ahead and be watching out for you chef that's another trade i'm gonna be watching for i like the setups i like the setups that we're getting yeah, all right usd mexican pesos let's talk about the pesos man so Still looking like it's going to continue going bearish. As I've been saying for the past couple of weeks now, I'm like, hey, this isn't necessarily a market that I want to trade at this time because I want to see the DXY go bearish. And that would make you with the USD Mexican go bearish as well. Price rejected off of that 50 EMA on the daily time frame and then pushed to the downside. Still holding at this potential swing by area, but I'm not necessarily going to play it. If there were some lower time frame that I was looking for, but again, just the fact that I want to see the DXY go bearish is why I'm not even going to attempt to trade this. You know, I'm just going to be like, you know what? Do your thing. You can hold over there. You all good. You all gravy. So. price it looks like it's just going to break through these lows and continue pushing to the downside i'd be surprised if it doesn't but if it doesn't i'd be looking for this if it holds right there this would be where i'll be looking for a sell opportunity at for at for usd mexican peso but i doubt that's going to play out so that is for tacos Daily time frame. Well, let's go into the weekly first. Weekly time frame. Price is getting closer to that RSI line. It's currently at that 50 E. I mean, not 50 E. I mean, I'm tripping. Mean line. Price is currently on the daily time frame at that lower danger zone. Could be using that as a support, but everything is lining up for a continuation to the downside. Four hour time frame called for the sell after it called for this buy which again I, the price is consolidating i would not necessarily be playing this because it's, it's consolidating for sure on the one hour time frame so again usd mexican is not one of those pairs that i'm necessarily caring to play right now but i do think it's going to continue pushing to the downside all right let's take a look at goldilocks the hater the hater of all haters, man, well, don't, doesn't want me to be great. <laughs> so 
weekly time frame bearish candle it was almost a bearish engulfing candle except price left a wick to the downside and it's currently at that 50 ema price has been playing with this 50 ema for so long it's it's funny daily time frame you can see that price as it was from the lows of 1752.769 price has been pushing up gradually it finally came up to the Fibonacci, the 61.8 Fibonacci level, and it held there, not coming up to 1840 like how I wanted it to, and ended up pushing to the downside, but literally almost coming close to the. It would this would have been a, um, the one to one, almost. It, it would have been one to one. Like look where price is at. Like it very, it came very close to the 23.6 level. So I'm just like, hey. It got the best. It, it it got the best of me. the The trade didn't go to where I wanted it to hit, so I missed the trade. It is what it is. However, for, this is an area where price can go bullish from. This is a long term area where price can go bullish from. I do not encourage you to try to buy this. Not yet, at least. Price just rejected off of that sixty one point eight. I do think that it could put, continue pushing to the downside, especially with how much of a drop this was i mean technically speaking if i were to have sold this which i don't know why i didn't kind of to be honest with you me placing my fibs there price would not have stalked me out and this would have been a good trade yeah i would have been i would have been sweating a little because price would have almost hit me out as stop loss but it did end up going down and hitting that 38.2 extension, which would have been a fire. I'm pretty sure that would have been way more than a one to three risk to reward ratio if it was off the 71%. Yeah, one to 3.36 risk to reward trade. It would have been solid, but anyways, that's cool. 15 minute time frame. I like that there's this bullish uh, big volume right here before price starts to start to turn around. That could be a potential turnaround sign for the one hour time frame. Big volume right there. Off of that um seven. Off of that NFP. So what I'll be looking for for reals is if price is going to come back down for a retracement down into the likes of 1788 and then continue going bullish, then I might, I might look for this play for a short term buy just for, just for a small, a small buy, maybe like a one-to-one -one trade. And that'll be for probably arbitrage. I mean, not arbitrage for next wave students. We'll see how that goes on. I forgot to go ahead and look at arbitrage. Arbitrage one hour time frame is calling for that buy as well. Now, Level Pro and Arbitrage Z have not gotten there quite yet. But what I would like to see is that small retracement to 1791 before looking for buying opportunities on gold. After that drop, I would like the retracement to be able to possibly get into a sell opportunity on gold and i like that i like that one i would play on gold on the on for, for the potential on arbitrage four hour time frame been bearish i would want to see a retracement at least to that rsi line before i would potentially even try to get into a sell daily time frame it's currently above the rsi line and the mean line so this is kind of iffy. It can still it can still go bullish, but the way how the R sign is pointing down, that can be saying, nope, I'm about to turn around. And the weekly is just interesting. It's currently under the, the RSI line. So Level Pro is also showing that it's bearish. I mean, not Level Pro, Arbitrage G is showing that it's bearish. Level Pro is showing that it's still above ground zero. So We'll see what happens with gold. I do like the short-term retracement, though, for a buy opportunity. So, going to be watching that for gold as well. S&Ps, man. 
SMPs I mean it it dropped it definitely it definitely dropped for sure I'll give it that I like that drop that it did I mean all I can see at this point is hey let's see what price is gonna come and do it if it gets down to four six four five or four six one nine you guys know how, how I feel about these these things are built to buy so I would I would more than likely be looking for this play here for price to go bullish in this zone before making more higher highs because that's what us all price has been doing and even with this whole covid thing that's been going on at prices and then the market dropping like this yeah that's cool and everything but at the end of the day price is still looking it's still making higher highs you know a couple of days red the market does that quite often you know if price comes back down comes into the zone and then it takes me out the trade i'm more than likely going to be looking for this play instead for for price to come down to 4432 so i'm going to mark that off but i definitely want to see what this play is going to look like shorter 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 term view Right, so we're gonna see what that SP what that SP do right here at this zone. Gonna get my alert set for that. Four hour time frame. There most likely is gonna be a correction to the upside before price decides to drop. It could just continue dropping realistically, the way how it closed, that's what it looks like is gonna do. But there could be a possible correction before it does make that drop. So that's something I'm gonna be watching for on how the market opens. But again, the way how it looks, it looks like it's gonna potentially fall. We'll see how that plays out though. Go back onto arbitrage daily time frame price is currently it currently closed underneath the daily time frame rsi line however everything is still above ground zero so they could this could still be a bullish move right like i said for price to come for price when for price to go down a little lower to 4619 it wouldn't be terrible it wouldn't be a terrible idea for price to buy over there I wouldn't necessarily buy off of where arbitrage is currently at. Definitely would want more confirmations like this one hour time frame. It was it was it, it's iffy because I would have rather have wanted price to have done this for me before I look for a buy rather than getting into on this buy and nothing was confirmed. You know, nothing was confirmed with this buy as well. So saved a whole lot of headache for me at least. So I'm going to be watching S&P, seeing what it's going to do. I have a lot of things on my watch list. Daily time frame, Dow Jones. Well, let's just go on to the weekly. Rejecting off of that zone, but it did make higher highs. I like the whip to the upside, but knowing, <laughs> just knowing this pair, it's most likely just going to go and follow that wick eventually. Dow Jones would have to make a deeper move to the downside if I was looking for the buy opportunities at this point. And with that looking like that, I don't know if I necessarily want to buy you, Chef, if it gets down here. I would have to see what the how it looks like. But if Dow Jones has it came down here and S&P is in the zone, I'm going to have to wait for the Dow Jones to get to at least a 61.8 before I make a decision. So again, it's basically the same thing that I have with, with, with the Dow Jones with us 30. I want to see 
that retracement back down to 35329. And if price rejects off of that zone, that trend line, all that good jazz, I do expect it to continue making higher highs. Now, price can just continue going bullish from where it's at. For sure, for sure. You know, if we go on to the, well, yeah, if you go on to the lower time frames, the four hour, you can see there was these equal lows, first of all, that price just broke through right here. It broke through, broke, went to the downside, broke out, came back down. So it could definitely be looking for buy opportunities right there, first of all. Secondly, let me actually get this alert set before I continue. All right, so what I was what I was what I was seeing is that hey, potentially, you know, just from where price decided that okay, it's finally gonna break above these zones above above this high, the start of that bullish move, look where price is rejecting off of, off of that 71% Fibonacci level. So if price is rejecting off of here, it could definitely continue going bullish at this zone as well. So that's something I'm gonna be watching for. But overall, the better the better play, the safer play would be to wait for thirty five thousand three hundred and twenty nine before looking buy for buy, buy opportunities on on US thirty. I'm actually gonna go take a look at. I'm actually gonna go take a look at S and P real quick and see if that's kind of the same thing that I have. Yeah from where price decided to break out to break out above these above the previous all-time highs it's kind of the same thing this is where the bullish move started price is currently at that 78.6 so i'm gonna see what the mark how the market opens up and what the market looks like because we could like i said we could possibly see that correction happen right here for price going bullish before coming to the downside so that's something that we could definitely be looking for and arbitrage on the one hour calling for that buy <laughs> i had to do it all right one hour on arbitrage for us 30 however is not looking that great either if i'm not mistaken spx was looking pretty bad as well so it's not nothing's confirmed yet right so that's the one hour. Let's look at the weekly. Of course, the weekly is bonkers saying don't sell this thing. Daily time frame. Sorry. Daily time frame rejecting off of that upper danger zone right there. And then we also have the four hour time frame where it's called for a sell. I would need a retracement to the upside nonetheless for US 30. But again, this is just, mm -mm, it's not my play. It's not for me. So Dow Jones, I'm gonna be watching those two for a shorter, for a shorter, um, eight. that's for shorter time, time frame potentials, right? So let's take a look at Bitcoin. So. I had mentioned last week before I even, oh, I had deleted it, question mark? No, I did not. So I had said that, hey, I'm in these opportunities for Bitcoin, but the way how the markets are looking, I would suggest that maybe trying to get out of the, out of the trades. And I, even on the analysis that I did, arbitrage users, you guys know that I had said that, hey, at this point, price is breaking through these lows. I mean, the price is right at these entries, get out of the trade. You know, I still, I said get out the trade. I still have the posi a small position running. I just wanna see how that's gonna play out long-term, but I still have these plays running for myself personally. But I had mentioned, hey, maybe it's a good idea for you to get out the trade, so. Let's go ahead and start off with a fresh markup. Um, next, okay. 
let me stop saying that. But next wave students, you guys know what the what the market, what the vibe is. You guys know what painting has been spent in, and I've been saying, hey, that's super, that's super bars right there. Price from holding from the lows of thirty nine thousand eight hundred and forty to the highs of sixty nine thousand. Price has came all the way down to forty thousand five hundred. That's tough, Seno. That's tough. And so we could pos we could possibly see price continue to push to the downside, guys. Like as I've been mentioning, from these lows, we could be possibly seeing price push down a little lower. But however, from this is just another place where I'd be like, hey, this is not a bad like long-term swing positioning for Bitcoin. Now, something like this might propel Bitcoin up to $93,000. $93, if this is really going to take off from, if it's really going to take off from these lows, from this 71%, even possibly going down to 37K. 37K would be a money shot. Like it would be a money shot. However, if we see the likes of 35K, like if we see this zone in general right here get broken out of, I'm still pretty optimistic in the market. I'm pretty sure there is fear. I'm pretty sure there is a whole lot of fear in the market. Let's see what let's see what we got here. Oh wow. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm not gonna look at no CNN stuff. Yeah, you see fake news, bro. Get the wait. You guys saw you 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 guys saw what I just saw, right? You guys just saw what I saw. Fear and greed index. What emotions driving the market right now? Wait, oh, it's for yields and stuff like that. Man, I forgot to put crypto. Okay, that's my fault. That's my fault for not for not being specific and saying crypto fear or greed. But anyways. There's extreme fear in the market. Yesterday, there was a 10 extreme fear in the market. These are the times that investors are looking to pop in. Like this bull run is definitely a lot different than previous bull runs. However, this is when that smart money is coming into play. When there's extreme fear in the market. Last month, there was extreme fear. This month, there's more. There's even more extreme fear. What smart money likes to see that because they're like, okay, this is buying opportunities. Either A, it's a great opportunity buying opportunity, or B, these are signs that yes, we are now going into a bearish market in the crypto market. But again, until this zone gets broken, we can, it's still gonna be bullish. Like even the trades that I'm in, yeah, the stop loss could, if the stop loss potentially gets hit down over here, oh well, like if the stop loss gets hit down over here with my small trades it's okay i'm willing to risk that but overall swing wise these are these are beautiful levels to be looking for buys so these are still beautiful levels to buy so that's my take on bitcoin i don't necessarily care for the the i don't really like the weekly time frame how it's looking one may argue that this could be looking like a head and shoulders pattern for sure, for sure. We've got the left shoulder. Oops. Let's try that again. Got the left shoulder right here. Got the head. Then you got the right shoulder. I'm gonna fix this up a little bit. So that's one thing that you can see until price breaks out of this zone, though. I'm not going to necessarily say that this is going to fall. So that's my take on the Bitcoin. Overall, it is still in a it's still in a lower high level right here. If it breaks this, if it breaks down underneath this 29K, if it, if it really does break below 30K, 29K, we're more than likely going to be seeing the likes of 17K in the, in the crypto market. And guys, 
just think about how much of a big opportunity it would be if we get those prices. Let's just say if we get 22K overall from the low of March of 2020 to the high of November, 2021, right? Right now, from the from the all time high of Bitcoin, right now prices dropped down a good 39, wait, no, 40%. Well, yeah, 40%. 41%, right? If it drops down to these fibs, then the market will be dropping down a total of 66% for the Bitcoin market. A total of 66%. 78.6, a total of 75%. If we look back over here in November, and Peyton and I, we were just talking about this yesterday. If you we look back in November, and then we see where price really dropped down all the way down to, we can see that it made that 85% retracement. So we could possibly say that once if we once we get that confirmation saying that, yo, we're not in the bearish market anymore. I mean, we're not in the bullish market anymore, which the 50 EMA, I don't like price being under it like how it is, but it has came under the 50 EMA before and then went bullish. So that's something to watch out for. But we all know that what comes up must well not all of us some of us might not even know that but what goes up must come down i don't necessarily like the fact that the weekly time frame is under the rsi line on the weekly time frame so that's something to watch out for the arbitrage z i don't think it's is ever gone this low the last time that price we i called for i was trying to get the sell i should have been paying attention to these because it was not confirming the sell daily time frame been bearish for quite some time now still want that breakout retest continuation before I, I really consider this bullish everything is still bearish on the daily time frame four hour time frame same thing everything is still pretty bearish i'm glad i was giving those warnings one hour time frame could potentially go bullish here but again I don't think so. I don't think quite yet. It might give a fake out to the upside and then push back down. But let's see what happens. I'm gonna be patient with Bitcoin for now. But again, swings. Swing levels, these are pretty good swing levels to me. However, if price does end up, if if price, if you get into swings and then price ends up breaking through this break, breaking throughout the zone. 30k might get seen and demolished and price may continue pushing to the downside but we'll see what happens overall with is it bitcoin overall i want this play to happen at this point in time for swing leverage plays for swing leverage plays i want to see this play or even margin you know i want to see this play out stop loss would probably be below 28k realistically so we'll see what goes down with the bitcoin ethereum so ethereum kind of feel the same way about it that hey right now i mean it's it looks pretty bearish on the daily time frame. It can definitely still hold where it's currently at, though. Daily time frame, it is holding at that 78.6 Fibonacci level. And if it does hold here, then wouldn't that be a good and solid buying opportunity area? Let's, we got to see what happens. There is lower time frame plays that could be it, uh, identifying potential buying opportunities so we'll see what goes down with ethereum as well as basically the same thing that i'm feeling with on bitcoin there's a lot of other confluences that we're seeing that hey we might be seeing some bullish opportunities going on as long as price holds above because it is making higher highs and higher lows this is a higher low as long as price doesn't break below 2,565, this could go bullish and still continue making higher highs. This 
bullish market is definitely nothing like we've seen in the past and it can still it still has the potential of going bullish especially where there's extreme fear in the market like this hey we'll see what happens just going over to arbitrage real quick all right ethereum one hour time frame still hasn't called for a buy yet that's good four hour time frame is still pretty bearish daily time frame pretty very bearish as well at the rejecting off of the third deviation this is the only scary part guys weekly time frame this is the first time unless price does reject and go bullish this would be the first weekly candle since since when on arbitrage since march of 2020 will be the first time that price on ethereum on the weekly time frame has closed underneath the weekly 50 ema i mean not the 50 ema the rsi line i don't know why i keep mixing up everything with that 50 ema <laughs> so that's something we definitely want to watch out for on ethereum but again right now this is a zone if it holds if we get some really good price action and price holds at the 78.6 level i might try to get in that i want to see some other place so we'll see what goes on with ethereum xrp kind of the same thing guys but again remember these all these if this is a bear market then we will definitely be getting some discounted prices on some of these trades i had mentioned i'm getting a, i was getting out of this xrp um 10 or actually no nine this but i was saying that i'm getting out of this xrp buy i'm glad i did end up getting out of it and i'm going to be patient with it but it still is at a swing level that you could be looking for buy opportunities at or it wasn't even it wasn't even here that i was saying that i was getting out the buy it was over here there was a buy play price was consolidating consolidating here i'm like no i don't like it i'm gonna get out and eventually price pushed the upside so what i want to see now you know when you really look at it on the weekly time frame we can see that price is still holding at this zone from all the way over here to the left I even make it smaller. We can see right here where price was using this as a resistance before it took off. Now price is rejecting off of here as using it as a support. These are good prices to be buying, honestly. Even if, if you bought prices at 75 cents and price dropped down like 30 cents, it's still a good price to start buying it. I think this is where I started like really paying attention to ripple when it was no actually it was over here back in back in 2020 like early 20 no not even 2020 like late 2019 when prices were at this 32 cents level but still hey there is still the potential of price going bullish here it's just not the signs aren't there yet and it's when the market is in extreme fear like how it is that's when you actually really want to pay attention and say, hey, maybe these are good buying opportunities. Because again, these are the levels where the banks are going to be looking to buy at, right? They're going to want to scare you out of your position so that <laughs> not everybody can win in this market. If everybody wins in this market, then there's not going to be any money to be made. There has to be losers, there has to be winners. So you want to be on the winning side, of course, right? Overall, this still looks like a good solid place to look for buy opportunities for Ripple. However, arbitrage is saying not yet. Arbitrage is definitely saying not yet. Weekly time frame, I had said, hey, it called for the sell retracement. This thing is playing out. I don't like that it's playing out, but it is. I'm glad I got out the trade when I said to get out the trade. 
XRP mm, consolidating right there, one hour time frame. I wouldn't play it on the one hour. Nope. So I'm still, like I said, I do like the buy opportunities. It's there, but for me to play it, nah, it's not for me. GBP USD. I had talked about this last week and price is still doing what I wanted, what I wanted it to do. So I was saying, hey, from these lows, I mean from this higher low, or for this lower high to this lower low. I want to see what price is going to do with this retracement. It didn't give an ABC retracement and price got up there pretty fast. So I do like where it's coming up at. 71% will be the usual spot where I'll be looking for a potential retracement. But the way how price is getting up here, I'm going to have to wait and see what the reaction is going to be before I try to get into any type of sell on GPUSD. But for now, But for now, it is respecting this trend line. And we can see what happens when price gets up here before looking for sell opportunities. It is looking pretty interesting. Sorry to do that. It wouldn't look it wouldn't look great. Nah. So we'll see what happens with GU. Weekly time frame, very much bullish. Three white soldiers. Yeah, I wouldn't try to sell this at this point in time. It, it closed above the 50 EMA. Don't try to sell this. Especially if the DXY is going to go bearish. Don't try to sell that thing. Not yet, at least. Wait for some more signs. One hour time frame bullish. Four hour time frame bullish. I was saying, hey, once I get that, once I get that breakout retest continuation, that's when I'll look for the sells. But other than that, price looked bullish. Still continuing with the buys. I never we never got the retracement. I wanted the retracement before continuing to the upside. Never did. So yeah, like I said, when it comes to GU, I'm glad I've been patient with the GP pairs. Same thing with GA. I almost, I almost took a, I almost took an L on GA so hard. We're about to talk about it. And hey, again, this has been calling for sales, but the sales play is called has been played out for a while now. So let's go on. Let's go on over to the next one. GA again. Like I said, I would have probably taken an L. I would have probably taken an L. I was saying, hey, from this bearish move, I wanted to see the retracement up to 1.87700, but price went up. It would have stalked me out my trade for sure. I'm glad. And I and I was saying, and I was talking about this with DeFi domination, right? I'm like, depending on how, and then Peyton says this all the time. I actually learned this from Peyton. Depending on how the way how the market is getting to your price, you're going to debate if you're going to want to get into the trade or not. And it does definitely help with an opinion, with your opinion, right? However, GA is still at the 78.6 zone from this, from these highs to these lows. Now, I do, I am feeling the possible possibility of the sell here. I feel it hardcore. But prices already came up here once, and then if it's if it's doing a stop out like I, I'm hoping it is, and how I want AED USD to go bullish, then yes, here absolutely I want price to sell so hard. But we're gonna have to see what what the price action is looking like, right? Let me go on over to the 30 minute time frame and see what this looks like. Smaller time frames that played out very nicely, boys. So I'm gonna want to see how the market opens up and I might get into a swing GA sell. If I'm getting into a AUD USD buy, I want to get into a swing GBP AUD sell. We'll see what that looks like though, right? So going on over to arbitrage weekly time frame, still very much bullish. 
rejected off of that RSI line and went bullish right after that. So that's not a good sign for the sales. Neither is this. As I was mentioning last week, I don't like the way how price was falling for a sell, but price was above the RSI line. So that's not, that wasn't a great sign. And lo and behold, they, there you go. That's the reason why. Four hour time frame, price was very much bullish. This played out like crazy. And then a one hour time frame, price called for a buy. I would not have played that, but it played out very nicely. It's, called, it's probably gonna call for a sell though. So arbitrage users, you wanna watch for this for the possibility to try to get into a GA sell. I like that play. I like the, the sell opportunities right now, especially where price is at, but I would need to see the breakout retest continuation to the downside before I play this GA sell more than likely. So GA I'm gonna be watching for. I have a lot of pairs I'm watching for. GJ, four hour time frame. It looks like it's gonna keep going to the upside. Very much bullish. I'm glad I didn't try to play it. Same thing as with GA. The speed in which the prices were moving, I wasn't really that crazy in trying to get into buying opportunities with them. So with that being said, that's funny. Want to see, I want to see what price is going to possibly do. It looks like it's going to more than likely try to go for a bullish move, in my opinion, where it's like breakout, retracement, down to 155.600 or 700, and then a continuation to the upside may be in play. That might be what's going to happen with GJ, but for now... I'm just gonna be patient and wait to see what, what happens when price gets there. 152.700 is the pricing that I want. And we'll see what happens, right? Let me delete this. Arbitrage wise, this thing is <laughs> pretty bullish. One hour time frame caught for by four hour time frame is it looks like it wants to set up for itself, but it's going to need some time before it does. It's going to need a breakout, retracement, continuation before I look for a sell. On GJ, daily time frame is definitely very bullish. And weekly time frame as well, very much bullish. It called for a sell, but at this time, I would have probably gone out to sell a long time ago. So, yeah, GJ, I'm not necessarily watching it, but the buy plays look good. And your GDP, as I said, as I said, man, I'm not even gonna really pay so much attention to this pair because it is just making lower highs and lower lows, in my opinion. I had tried to get a sell opportunity over here at 0 0.83815, but that didn't play out for the one to one. It rejected off for the 61.8 instead. And so I'm just going to, you know, leave EG alone. Honestly, I'm not even going to give you guys an analysis on it. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, thanks for checking out my analysis. I do appreciate it. And let's see what the market brings us. We got, I'm down to one trade and I am looking at one, two, three, four, five, six different opportunities as well. So that's a pretty, it's going to be a pretty decent week. Later, y'all.